Hey, what's up? We learned the basics of Twitter API in previous videos, and now we are going to create a full stack application that will analyze tweets coming from different countries in real time. This is the final product that we are going to create. This chart shows us a comparison of sentiment of different topics and hashtag of Twitter. You can see how the data changes in real time. Isn't that amazing? The best part is that this application is scalable and it will run fast, no matter how much data you will collect. More on that later. To be able to create such an app, you just have to smash the like button down below. It works every time. Let's get it started. First, let's talk about the requirements. In order to run the project, we only need Docker and Python 3 installed on our machine. All the other requirements are going to be installed from the script available on the project GitHub repository. Also, please don't forget about the Twitter developer account. The tutorial on how to use it is available in the previous Twitter episodes on this channel. Links are in the description. Just so you remember, this is the page from which we are taking the needed keys. So we've seen the beautiful charts we generated from the tweets using Grafana. But how exactly does our solution work? Here's the graphical breakdown of the technical architecture. As you can see, we've got Grafana includes DB, Python. We also have Rabbit Message Queue. Its job is to pass the data from one script to another. And if there are too many requests, just queue them and process them later. I will start with cloning the project from GitHub repository. Again, the link is in the video description. Let's go to the repository page, click the clone button and clone it. And now when you got clone repository, I'm going to open it in Visual Studio Code. I'm going to make sure that Docker is running on my machine and it certainly is running. Now let's prepare the project for running. We need to copy and paste the consumer API keys and access tokens that we got from the Twitter developer panel into the .env file. One should be here in the ingest folder. Let's create a file called env. I'm just going to paste the data straight from the Twitter. So, yep, that's it. I'm going to create one more file with the influx and Grafana configuration. I'm just going to paste it from the, from the GitHub readme and the project is ready. When you get everything ready, you just have to open up the terminal by pressing Ctrl backtick and then type in docker-compose app-d and let's wait for the containers to be ready. As you can see, they are up and running and this command uh, started Grafana and InfluxDB applications. Python scripts need to be manually started using the start sh script this one here. So just type in start a sage and click enter. As you can see, there are no errors and we can go uh, to the dashboards to see if that's working. First, let's go to the rabbit login here. The username is guest, password is also guest. And we've got our dashboard when we see the deliver and publishing messages on our queues. As you can see, we've got two queues, one consumer each, and there are 13 messages coming per second. The most important part is the analysis you can do in Grafana. Please take your time and try the stuff. You should try to edit the dashboard and maybe you will find much more interesting options than I did. The user interface is fairly simple, so you shouldn't take any tutorial for it. But if you need one, check the link in the description. I'm gonna show you how to enter the Grafana dashboard. So it's here. And the username is admin, password is also admin. You can just skip the, the password you set. And we've got our dashboard. If you don't see it here, go to dashboards and go Twitter sentiment analysis. And now we've got our data. You can change the, the time frame, 
or the request refresh time. And you can, you can select something here. So we've seen the beautiful charts we generated from the tweets using Grafana. But how exactly does our solution work? Let's go into Grafana details. What exactly is Grafana? Grafana is a time series analysis tool. It's mostly used for monitoring of time-related data, for example, CPU usage and time or network traffic. Today we are going to use it for internet sentiment monitoring. Our deployment consists of two items, data source and a dashboard. The data source is InfluxDB, which is just our database where we store all the tweets. It's here. So we've got the InfluxDB configured from our Docker and we've got the dashboard as we saw before. The dashboard specifies how to query, arrange and aggregate our data. For example, this is a tweets counter, which shows how much tweets our code accumulated in the selected time frame, which is default to T minus 15 minutes. You can edit every widget here by clicking the drop down and clicking edit. As you can see, everything is fairly simple to configure. We can, cha we can change anything. For example, let's say we want tweets, not from the last 15 minutes, but like one minute, or maybe 10 seconds. And here we have it. I'm going back to 10 minutes and I'm gonna discard the changes. The graph below shows moving average of our negative tweets score grouped by the hashtag. So as you can see, we've got Elon, we've got GME, we've got Trump and the USA. Basically, when you click edit, you've got a moving average of 30 last records. So we are getting statuses where track equals news and we are just creating moving average from 30 last negative fields from our time series and everything is duplicated for each individual track. I'm going to show you how to add a new, new widget here. Let's just click add a panel. And let's say we need, uh, we need information about how much new tweets we have in the given 10 seconds. Yep, and now we've got the volume of tweets coming from the Twitter. We can change the uh, visualization here. So let's make it a stat or maybe a gauge. I like the stat here. So let's uh, Let's just leave it as it is and hit apply. As you can see, we've, uh, we've got our new widget here and to save the dashboard, you have to update the JSON file. So copy the JSON to your clipboard and let's update our dashboard here. I'm going to paste it. Let's stop the Docker Compose, or maybe, uh, yeah, let's start this, stop the script and let's restart the Docker container. And hit refresh. As you can see, our widget survived the restart. Okay, so let's let's go to the Python Python part. Let's see what exactly our script is doing in the background. You are here just for the secret sauce, aren't you? So the, the first stage of analysis is the ingestion part, 
this script is doing pretty much the same thing as you as before from the Twitter analysis series. We are just here authenticating, uh, getting the 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 stream uh, as you can see here, and uh, for the for the new message which arrives, we are not just printing it to the screen. Uh, we are publishing it to the RabbitMQ message queue. If you don't know what a message queue is, check out this explanation here. So we are de-emojifying our text and we are assigning a track which we are listening to because we've got a multiple keywords here. It says Elon, GME, Trump, USA. You can update it for the new keyword if you want. And uh, here is the the only RabbitMQ code. There was one problem implementing the TwiPy here because uh, as you can see, uh, TwiPy library does not differentiate from which track given status or tweets come from. So we needed to implement the differentiation ourselves. So it works just by dumping the whole tweet into the lower case like it's JSON and then it searches for the given keyword in that in that string dump. This is not an ideal solution because for example you can search the Twitter API key names like date or full text but if you can avoid tracking such keywords it doesn't matter at all. If you had a better solution to this problem please let us know on the GitHub issues or if you can prepare a pull request which fixes the issue. Okay, let's go into the second part of the analysis. Let's go to the folder too. This is a very simple yet complex algorithmically script, which gets the tweet from RabbitMQ, computes the sentiment score, both positive and negative, and publishes the results back to the rabbit. Sentiment algorithm is provided by the NLTK library with the help of model called Vader Lexicon. You can find a link to the library in the video description. As you can see, it's the here is the analyzed sentiment part. So yeah, just analyzing the, the text. And the script is configured. So whenever a message comes on the RabbitMQ, uh, it's going to call this function called callback. It just loads the, the message analyzes it and publishes back the results into another queue called persistence. Let's go to the third part, which is persistence. This one is straightforward. All it does, it gets the analyzed tweet from the RabbitMQ and puts them into the database. Let's say it. We've got the persistent pi script. And as you can see, we are just connecting to the InfluxDB and we are making sure that whenever something comes on the persistent queue, it calls our callback method, which is right here. It loads our JSON and put this puts this data into the InfluxDB. The InfluxDB database needs a measurement name. So it's just our status. We can have multiple measurements. You can have like IoT solution or something. And we, we have the tags, so you can tag your data. And for the time series part, you have to provide a time to like plot it on the graph. The data that you want to show or analyze has to be in the fields property. As you can see, our script does exactly one thing is just writing the, the data, format it into this JSON, into the database, InfluxDB database. Okay, so you may ask how to add something to the fields. To add a new field, let's say you incorporated a new method into the analysis script, which, we should, which you should um, put in the sentiment script. How to add it to the database? All the fields that come from the RabbitMQ 
are being stored in a database, so you don't have to change anything. It will work automatically, just because the whole object here is dumped into fields, so you can see all of it in the database. Let's go to the Grafana here, and let's just make sure you can you can view anything. Here is the is all of the fields that are contained in the database. So it's auto, author ID, neg, new, post, text, and track. And let's see what we are passing into the database. As you can see from this JSON here, we're passing exactly the same list of fields that are in the in the Grafana, but there are no fields like neutral, negative or positive because they are being added here. Now you should see a continuous stream of data coming from Twitter. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe go check out our machine learning tutorials if you want to step up your Twitter analysis game. See ya!